back and we are back black and a half episode number 214 today is a seven questions episode and i interview the star of the new film colorblind Chantel riley welcome everybody to black and a half the longest running comedy podcast in seattle probably today I interview the star of the new film Colorblind, Chantel Williams. Chantel is a is a wonderful actress out of Canada. She joined me on the show to answer the seven questions and to promote her her new movie, Colorblind, Canadian film, uh, where I discovered racism is also in Canada. Who knew? I thought it was just a U.S. export. We just perfect it. I think. Uh, Colorblind, uh, let me read the description they sent over. Uh, the emotionally captivating f- feature Colorblind follows the story of Magdalene, a colorblind black artist and her son, Monet, as they move into the new neighborhood where they are challenged when they see the true color of people. Color, colorblind, get it? Okay. Uh, when their racist landlord, Walton, is forced to babysit due to an unexpected emergency, he discovers a more colorful world through the child's black and white perspective. Colorblind takes the audience through a heart-wrenching journey of the complexities of race and social justice, seeing it through the lens of a colorblind mother and son. Uh, colorblind stars Chantel Riley, which you may have seen in Frankie Drake Mysteries or Wyanna Earp, Trey Muradati, uh, which you might have seen in Black Batman, Batwoman, sorry, and Gary Shock, Cold Squad, Day of the Dead, and a host of others. Uh, the film is proudly comprised of a majority uh, BIPOC crew, which is nice. It's written and directed and produced by Mostafa Keshvari. Um, it's a hey, it's a it's a film. I I I did, I did enjoy watching it. I think it brought up some great concepts. I like the uh, I, li- I like the premise there. Um, some special effects in it. Eh, I don't, you know me when, when you see the film. When we talk about those, um, I don't, by policy, I don't really do reviews on films that I interview the people because that can be really awkward. Right. But I do, uh, I do got to say, I really enjoyed Chantel's performance in this and, uh, made me really want to interview her. So uh, I got to do that via zoom. Uh, she was out in Toronto, uh, on set for another movie. So who knows she could be blowing up, but you heard her here first on black and a half. So. Yeah, I'm going to have that interview just in a moment. She does the world famous seven questions and we find out about her background and how she got to where she is. Uh, big shout out first to our Patreon subscribers. If uh, you want to help out, make sure this genius podcast uh, keeps going. Please be co- consider becoming a Patreon member by supporting the show for as little as $1 a month. Just go to patreon.com forward slash black and a half. And for as little as $1 a month, you can become a member of the League of Extraordinary Listeners. Uh, And for just a little bit more, you can become an Inner Circle member like uh, Keith Nagel, uh, Stefan Ward, Tara Widener, Wiedner, always, every single time. Um, You can, uh, and also by supporting this podcast, you support all other podcasts that I do, by the way. You can support the, uh, you're watching a movie with Silas Lindenstein, where this is actually going to be airing as well. So if you listen to that one, you may have already, you'll hear this one too at the same time. And you also support my other podcast. Well, that other podcast, the other, the, the third one, you're buying a home with Silas Lindenstein sort of sponsors all of these in a way, but wouldn't have happened without this one oddly. Right. So that's weird. But if you are interested in buying a home or know someone who is, you can send them over to your buying a home.com and they can find out, uh, from this podcast and the videos that I put out on real estate, all about the process of buying or selling a home. So, and, uh, where, where, where me, you know, I'm not just a podcaster by day. I'm a podcaster by night and I'm also a real estate agent by day and weekend. And, uh, actually whenever anyone else wants to see, uh, Slash Lindenstein boutique brokerage where I hang my hat in the Seattle, Washington area. So if you know anybody, send them my way. Regardless, here's the podcast that has nothing to do with real estate. 
Well, actually, there is a mm. there is a slight connection. That I just I just thought of that. So it, it does come. This really works. I I I this is pure synergy going on. Uh but anyway, Chantel's wonderful. Listen to this interview, enjoy, and thank you for listening to episode number 214, Seven Questions with Chantel Riley. So I was surprised to see the movie in Canada because I thought racism didn't exist there. It's it's such a happy, (laughs) the ongoing illusion. Yeah. The ongoing illusion that happens (laughs) in this country. (laughs) Colorful. Um, Is, uh, how 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 was it you how did you run across the film the project how did you get involved with it uh well just like you know your standard audition okay uh, casting call um i had read for the part and didn't hear back for a little bit so i thought okay i guess i didn't get it um and then i got the the call that they wanted me to play uh the lead so i was really excited uh to be able to jump in and tell the story are you um are are you are you colorblind yourself? Is that or did you have to? Did no, you prepare for that? no, I am not. I'm not colorblind. No, you know, I for the longest time I actually thought I I saw something on TV when I was young that there was a time where I thought they wouldn't put it in a movie or a TV show if it wasn't true, mm. right? And I was told something said that uh, women couldn't be colorblind that genetically was impossible. I was like, really? And I thought that for the longest time. And I even right. saw I even saw it as a plot point in another movie, and I was like, "Impossible! No, it's <laughs> so far fetched." How's that? Uh, then I realized right. I had misread it. It's the odds are lower, apparently. Yes, it's about much much yes. lower. Um, yes. Is it? Uh, I mean, was there was there anything you did to prepare for that? Like, as, yeah, as, I as mean, an definitely definitely did some research into the the idea of colorblindness and mm-hmm. the type specifically that. Um, my character had um she was able to see like pinks and reds whereas monet that uh trey that played my son he was only able to see like black whites and like grays Mm -hmm. and so what was really cool in the movie um was you got to see the perspective of both characters um so you'll see like if she's looking up to the sky and such it'd just be like pinks and and maybe like purples and then when you saw monet's vision um, you would see it in black and white. So the you know they did a really good job of letting the audience in on how these two were living. Is it? I was fascinated. Did you study at all on about being a painter? I mean, I wonder. I wondered. Like, I was like, you don't actually paint during this, right? No, I don't. I don't paint. Um, but I did do some at looking into. Um, you know, her favorite artist was, I mean, she named her kid after Monet. So yeah. I looked into that and actually did some painting of my own just to kind of get the idea and the flow of how, um, she would have done her, her artistry. So I took some time I didn't do any lessons. Most of them are usually cause I didn't have too much time, but, um, most of them are like just YouTube videos, lots of great tutorials on YouTube, by the way, you could just learn anything on there. <laughs> Um, so just sat on there and just looked at a couple and just did some practicing myself just to really deeply connect with her. Cool. Um, and you as a, you as an act, how, how, how have you been acting your whole life? Is this? No, definitely not my whole life. This was something that kind of just happened for me, to be honest. Um, but I've been in the industry professionally now for 10 years. 10 years. Oh, do you remember your first, not even non-professional, your first performance? in front of people well if in, well i used to dance when i was younger so if we're not doing the dance side okay um acting was probably in a in my church play <laughs> right. i had to play mary in the good old <laughs> christmas play um so that was like my, my first taste of acting in theater w- were you at a black church yes Okay, because I was like, oh, yeah. I want to see, I want to know. If if you weren't, <laughs> I want to hear this. Yeah. I want to know Caribbean how they reacted. A, a Caribbean church, yes, predominantly black. Are you from the Caribbean? Um, yes, my family is Jamaican. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. My, my ex-stepfather was Jamaican, so my, my I, have two, I have three brothers who are half Jamaican, okay. but lived here. 
So I'm okay. I visited my mother when she was uh when she first got married down there mm-hmm. uh to Ocho Rios. Yes. Where, Beautiful. And funnily enough, like I I didn't um we talked about how a lot of people, especially Americans, go down to Jamaica and they see the uh see the resorts and, and everything yes. that that part of it. But my mother lived there. So and she lived in the back woods in this little I won't even call it a cabin because I don't think it had full <laughs> walls. Like there was wasn't plumbing mm-hmm. there. And mm-hmm. so we talked about like I went to the markets with them and you know, oh, we were yeah. there a couple weeks in the back areas so you got and to experience like the true jamaica. actual yeah actual yeah. jamaica and the, yes. the 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 party the the poverty Proper part food. of it um yes yeah and then i grew up re- okay i need to know something i need to know if this was a jamaican okay. dish or if this is just something my ex my, my ex-stepfather was a little off right and so <laughs> I don't, I, I've long ago, I decided I can't be just blaming Jamaicans in general for these weird okay. things. Did you ever make like, did you ever fry tuna fish from a can, like in a, in a pan? Yeah. So is that a, that's a Jamaican dish? Yeah. That's a thing that we, yeah, definitely. Did you put cu- so sometimes if cucumbers, we don't have... cucumbers, I remember All the cucumbers. You yes. Put cu- it's a Jamaican but, thing. I thought he made it up. I guess so, because, um, I mean, we definitely have done it <laughs> in my household. Sometimes if there's no like salt fish, you just need like a quick dish. You know, you go to your, you know, your cabinet. Usually, usually most Jamaican households will have tins of tuna. <laughs> so or, what, what do you put beef. in your, what do you put tuna in your fried? Tuna and corned beef. What do you, corned beef, really? So, well, they were veg they were pescatarian. So I guess I wouldn't okay, have known that, so, that part. What? Tuna what, uh, for sure. What do you put in it? So in our house, they would just mostly just be like onion, onion, pepper, thyme, um, not too many other greens, to be honest. It would just be pretty simple. Okay. Salt and pepper, onion. Yeah. Maybe um, scotch bonnet pepper to give a little more spice. Scotch um, bonnet yeah. pepper? I don't know what that is. Yeah. So like jalapeno pepper. Oh, okay. Not, okay. So it's like a hot dip. It's oh, okay. really hot. Yes. Okay. Gosh, bonnet Very hot. Um, <laughs> I, I always tell people about the dish that had onions and cucumbers and tomatoes in it. And I was like, oh, yes, and I tomato. ate it. I was yes, fine with it. Like, I didn't oh, know yeah, any difference. Right. And then with white rice, we always served it for some reason. Yes. Um, or sometimes we would fry dumplings. So, yeah. Um, so like yes. Yeah, so it'd be like a good alternative if we didn't have any salt fish. That, that, was, that was the alternative. <laughs> he made four dishes. That was all he ever cooked rice and fried tuna. <laughs> Uh, yeah, rice and beans. Yes, oh, we say rice and peas. Rice, yeah, he said that too. But I was, mm-hmm. I really confused people when I would tell people about it. Um, <laughs> and then there was always this one he would overcook his fish, like it was just all day. They, uh, <laughs> I tell people, I've told this on the show before, it like steamed fish or escovitch fish. We had, I'm trying to remember what this was. It wasn't like, no, it was like this, uh, we had this, like. It was like this pan that we plugged in for some reason, and they would always cook fish in it. I don't know why. So I don't even know if outside. they like porched. No, no, it was inside. But it was like I don't know if it was poached. I just remember it was really greasy. They, 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 they would it would probably overcook. fried it. And they also, yeah. my mother still, my mother recently made fun of me to my brother. My brother visits and goes back, and he's like, "Mom, they put their pizza in the fridge." Like. <laughs> Because they, they just leave stuff out overnight. They would just leave it out overnight and then cook it the no. next day and go. And I was like, what? How did I not die? And they're like, <laughs> my mom's like, I lived in the bush. We don't like, you don't have a refrigerator sometimes. It's fine. You'll right. be, you're okay. Yeah, sometimes like, it gets left out. Yeah. Like, what? And now I, t- I would yeah. tell people this and they can't believe I'm alive. Okay. So I'm, <laughs> I'm getting educated. Jamaican, actual there Jamaican culture. Um, there you go. Man, do you, what? Is that what dish do you miss a dish from home? Like when you're uh whenever I come home, it would I'm I love Jamaican breakfast. So fried dumpling, fried plantain, Akin and saltfish are like my favorites. Oh, the dumpling, I don't eat, yeah, dumplings, that was the other Yeah, one. I don't eat um chicken, beef, or pork anymore. So mm. it's mostly just fish for me too. So yeah. saltfish for sure, escovish fish, 
like those kind of that side of stuff. So I like they actually just made it because I'm in town right now. So they just made it the other day. So I was in heaven. <laughs> You're in Jamaica right now? No, I'm in oh. Toronto. I'm in Toronto. Oh, okay. Okay. In my parents' house, yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I moved on. Okay, so I wish. I, boy, that I went on a tangent there. The church, okay. You church play. What was okay. your first non-church play? Was there a first or performance? Or do you remember? So your- then, my first um, non-church play would have been my the beginning of my acting career, which was um, the Lion King, and I played Nala in the Lion King in Germany. Okay, the German production, yeah. Um, and then after that, I played Nala on Broadway for four years. Okay. Right. And I then did, from there. How do you get sorry? in Germany? How do you go to Germany to perform? To, where well, you, did you audition Lion here? King, yeah, in, in Toronto. So what happens is the Disney theatrical goes on like a world tour auditioning. Yeah. They don't just stay in one place or just stick to New York or even Canada. They go oh, South cool. Africa, they'll go Paris, France, wherever, wherever. And they'll do like a huge casting call, global casting call. And so they had stopped in Toronto. And um, my friend, Olenike Adili, uh, she uh, actually, she is now my mentor. And she was like, hey, there's an open casting call and you should come just check it out and see what happens. And I'm like, I don't know nothing about this stuff, (laughs) but I'm going to just make a fake resume take a quick black and white headshot because I think that's what actors do mm. and, and go on down to this audition and see what happens. Uh, lo and behold, I got quite a few callbacks and met the, you know, head creative team. And um, from there, a couple months later, I was called, I got called, I got an agent at the time and then got called to go to Germany and audition okay. there. And then from there, that's when I booked it. How do you, like, did you sing before? Like, did you, were you like, what did you carry? Sang okay. in church. Okay. Sang in church. Yeah. And after that, church, you weren't? Church. You were just. After, so after school, I was like working in like auto insurance, like whatever. Cause you know, that's the grown up thing to do is get a full-time job. Did you, go to, co- did you go to college <laughs> school or? Yeah. I went what? to York university out here what? in Canada. To study what? What did you study? For sociology. Sociology. Okay. Yeah. Just something to do. To just to get out <laughs> and you <laughs> weren't honest. you weren't taking singing lessons or anything no no i haven't taken any singing lessons i wasn't going to any art school it was literally just just what i love doing in my spare time and uh a gift i guess that i was blessed with and Were never you... never thought that i would end up living my life did you like do this. karaoke <laughs> did you do karaoke yeah, I love karaoke. So would you be the person at karaoke that's singing and they're all like, you need to do this. Why aren't you doing this? <laughs> that, did that well, happen they, to you a if bunch? They don't, if they don't know me already or don't know my story, then yeah, they'll probably say like, okay. girl. <laughs> why were you? Why? But most people I go to karaoke kind of know. Well, but know I mean, story, before, but. before. Before you oh, were an actor. Before. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, even before I used to sing in a little uh, girl group, gospel group with my best friends. Um, so we tour and go to the churches and have performances and stuff. So singing was a huge part of my life. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So they end up in <laughs> Germany and then, then you're in broad, then you get to the Broadway. So, the, yeah. and this, so this wasn't a dream. This wasn't a lifelong dream of being on Broadway. No. And I knew nothing about Broadway. Um, growing up, I didn't go to many plays or musical theater shows or anything like that. Um, I just didn't really know much about that part of the industry. I knew, you know, I watched movies and stuff, but I just never thought, oh, I want to be an actor. Right. Um, I knew I was dancing a lot. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll be a dance teacher at my old dance studio. And that was kind of the plan. But God said, think bigger, honey, because we got more for you. That's 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 wild. And sometimes I'm like, why did I I was telling my my daughter wants to do this, like well, or like she wants to be yes. in the industry. Right. And I'm like, yeah, you because I got a theater degree and did it did the stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, you, you can. You can go go the theater but or you could just kind of try to go do it you don't like there's valid reasons on both 
arguments totally. on why. But you, but you really, you never know. Like I never would have thought that this would have been my life. Had I not gone to that casting call, it probably never would have happened for me. Yeah. So if you truly believe that she has the talent and the skill to do it, I say, let her try and enjoy it and have fun. Yeah. And, and see, oh, yeah. no, see I'm, what takes her. I'm like, <laughs> it depends on the days that she gets me, whether I'm, <laughs> whether I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yes, well, whatever. I'm done. Right. Um, or like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to this little shoot tomorrow, whatever. So go <laughs> ahead. Yeah, whatever. Um that's awesome. Uh Chantel, um the f- the first time we have uh someone on the show here, mm-hmm. I I don't know if you were warned about this. Um or, or told about, it. but I, we, we ask we have seven specific questions that we ask everybody the first time they are on a show. Uh, it's oh, the, okay. the, it's the, uh, it, it's Silas Lindenstein's world famous seven questions. Okay. Uh Oh, and it's, it's well, let's see if I answer them. I don't questions. know. Well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one, what are you most nerdy about? And that doesn't mean anime. St- anime? Okay. Okay. Yes. I was going to say, it doesn't have to be ner- like, like, Nerdy, nerdy, I, mean, that is, I, get, I mean, I guess some anime? people consider it nerdy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so growing you, up, people were You get it. You get you deep dive into it. Like, what's what's your favorite? I'm an what is avid your avid anime manga watcher and reader? What is the what is? Do you have a top one? The one that this, you would want to say? Hey, so I think go check this my out. My all time favorite for me will be Naruto. To be honest, I just love the characters and storytelling in there what's right the, what, now loving what's the name one of it again piece. oh naruto naruto okay yes loving one piece right now grew up watching dragon ball z sailor moon like i could just sit there and watch it how, all did, day. <laughs> how did you get into it who uh honestly sailor moon was my first anime so i don't know how old was i then like eight or nine and it was on um, a channel that we have here called YTV, which is a kids kids network. Okay. Um, it was playing on there, and I was like, "Oh, what is this? You know, the pretty girls and the pretty costumes and the bright colors." And then from there, my brother and I we started watching like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, and then it so just, it was just you just there. happened to come across it one day, right? Okay. Yeah. Do you go to then, like? Have you ever been to a a Comic Con or a uh, anime convention? I not yet. I am dying to do an anime convention. There's one. In, there's one in Seattle where I am every year. Uh, okay. Called Sakura Con, and oh, okay, I've never been, but I uh-huh. love it every every year when it is because I just love driving downtown when conventions like Sakura or Comic Con are happening because you see yeah people in costume everywhere and I don't know so cool. anime and okay. I almost. Sometimes I, I, sometimes I think I don't ever want to know exactly because I can, the stories in my head from these costumes, I don't know if they can top it. What I was like, <laughs> what if people are dressing like, I don't know what they They're are. So, Let me make man, up a story. There are some really creative people out there and have some incredible skill to put those costumes. Some of them build them themselves from scratch. So I, I imagine Toronto and- must have a big one. Uh, Right? Not that I know of, to be honest. Really? I know New York has a big one. Okay. So most, I guess, people come down should, from here to New York. And don't don't feel. I always tell people for conventions, like, don't feel like you have to get dressed if it's not your thing, right? No. Just go I've been experience to it. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So just go to that thing you love. That con- everyone should go to a convention that's about the thing they love. I feel like I agree. Like everyone should. If it's accountant, there should be an accounting con. Or whatever, go to it and enjoy it. I no, will not be there. I was disappointed to find out Dragon Con does not uh is there's no dragons. It has nothing to do with a dragon. Surprise. Yeah. So go figure. All right. Uh number two. What is something that you love to eat? That I love to eat? Yes. I know I covered mm. this. I had touched it earlier, but what's that that love? Oh, it's gonna be Jamaican food. Yeah. But what? Like totally. what is it? Is it the um I could fish? eat fried plantain every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> How do you fry it? 
So we typically slice it long lengthwise okay. into like thinner pieces. Some people do it, um, like they chop it that way. So it's the round pieces, Yeah. but uh, we, we slice it down. So it's long and thin, throw it on the frying pan. So it's nice and crispy, but still juicy. Oh my God. I oil? eat that up with just- oil. Yes. Like, oil. There's a little olive oil. Do you salt it or uh, anything? No, or? So it'd be like whatever your frying oil would be. Okay. Um, yeah. Do and s- just take it out, fry it on there, back and front for like two, three, four minutes. Have that with every meal, every meal, every day. That's my life. I'd be very happy. Okay. okay. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> Is that, what do you do to someone? Someone says like, well, if someone calls plantain a banana, what do you like? What's your reaction? I tell them it's not. It's not. <laughs> And we don't and we don't say plantain, we say plantain. 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 <laughs> yes. Plantain. Yes. Is we that... it make we say plantain. Some places say plantain or like, plantain. what are you talking about? Plantain. <laughs> yes. Yasman. Um <laughs> what okay, number three. What's something that you mm-hmm. love to drink? Um, apart from water. <laughs> yeah. Um could be water. I I love a good glass of Pinot Grigio. Oh, okay. White wine. Yeah. Yes. Nice white wine or just like a nice. Okay. I'll get a couple. So white wine. Yeah. (laughs) Jamaican rum punch. Yeah. Okay. Or just a good old glass of lemonade. Mm, Oh my gosh. I, I do blame lemonade. I lost 50 pounds last year. Okay. Oh, congrats. Thank you. That's great. Um, I will blame lemonade for a good 10 of those. Um, <laughs> because especially during COVID, needing a comfort, I'm like, just give me a big jug of lemonade. It's a tall glass just one of glass. Oh, I wish yeah. I could do I wish I could do a glass, right? I was like too many <laughs> just the whole glasses. Jug. Just like, ah, oh. yeah, cold lemonade yeah. on a hot day is one of the greatest things. Oh, oh man. Love, oh, love so lemonade. Good. Okay. Um, number four, what kind of music do you love? So my go-to is typically R and B. Um, I love also listening to reggae, Afro beats. Um, and I really like listening to like 1950s and 60s jazz and soul music. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like art. So artist wise, who would, um, who's, who pops up on like your Spotify right away? What are they suggesting? So right now I'm loving, uh, SZA right now. I'm loving Burna boy. He's from Nigeria. Um, let's see. Jamaica wise vibes cartel. Oops. (laughs) Or spice is good. And then, like, when I go to, like, the 1950s-ish side, I love listening to Dinah Washington. Okay. Um, yeah, so I listen to her. And I actually, you know, you go to Spotify, you choose, like, radio. So I just yeah. put on Dinah Washington radio and just listen to all oh, the artists okay. that come up there, like Louis Armstrong okay. and all those guys that be coming up. So hmm. that's my that's my go-to, like, just chill music or cleaning the house music even sometimes. I put that on. You know, like, a few years ago, actually way more than a few now that I say it out loud, uh, I started <laughs> listening to uh, British soul music from like, oh, okay. like even current stuff is like, because I was, I was listening to some stuff and I was like, when's this from? What, what era is this song? And I was yes. like, and I'm like, 2010, what, what is this? Right, and I went down new. a rabbit hole of British soul music because some of it sounds like it's from the 60s, but it's not. Yeah. It's just there. And I don't understand how the British got so sulfur, soulful, particularly all the white folks. They're very, their music. I was like, they, they can sing. I'm like amazing, yeah. like amazing. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lydell, yes. Jamie Lydell. I used to wake my daughter up to one of his songs called uh, um, Another Day. Another Day. It's one of my favorite okay. songs that he sings. Love Jamie that. Um, Oddly enough, though, my go to playlist for the gym lately has been like rock music yeah <laughs> either like 90s rock or even as far as like the kiss era like those guys i would listen to that on that radio uh, and just let it yeah i will listen to stuff at the gym i will not listen anywhere else like yeah 
like, like that i'm not listening to that at home <laughs> yeah no i'll like sometimes i'm like i need something new and i put out a workout thing and it's uh <laughs> and like <laughs> like we will rock you comes on and yeah. i'm like okay, okay. yeah oh Please. yeah no oh, i can lift that we'll like, take it. like um, but yeah yeah no it just gives me a good pump i can't lie yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, number five. What is something you love? What do you love to create? Mm. I, as of right now, I am really enjoying creating um, new show ideas, TV show ideas. I am stepping into the role of producer. Okay. In this point in my life, um, as well as actors. So, uh, just connecting with other creatives and, you know, just putting together new shows or new film ideas has been really exciting for me. So that, and also, um, writing kids books. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kids so book. I have a, I have a kid's book right now that's called I am, and it's a book of affirmations for children. It's an illustrated book and, uh, currently working on, and that's everywhere. You can find it online, Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, um, and currently working on my second children's book right now. So, I mean, as a, as a woman of color, you clearly have an advantage stepping into television. What, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Get off the yeah. check what is there a, is it out of is it out of like the wanting to just create the stuff you want to be in or is it of, is there a gap missing that you want to fill? Like what is the the desire to produce? Yeah. I mean, I definitely obviously would love to do stuff that I would love to be in myself. Um, but for me, it's just more storytelling period, uh, especially when it comes to the black community. Mm -hmm. So just tapping more into that and being a woman from Toronto and just seeing like Toronto television, we could definitely afford a lot more black stories up here. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> it's kind of scanty. You know, we've had some a great year last year with the Porter and we've had revenge of a black best friend have all done incredibly well. We just had our Canadian screen awards, which is like our, SAG Awards okay. up here in Canada. And they swept and it was just so beautiful to see. And it's like, you know what? If you guys just give us a chance, we can make beautiful work. Um, and so I would love to just tap into that more and just give us more to relate to and to see more of ourselves on TV. That's that's fascinating because I was thinking I was as you were saying that, I was realizing like how many I was like, I don't know how many shows that I know are filmed in Canada that I would um, like, I hadn't really thought about the black, the, the, the lack of black work in Canada. Yeah. Um, Cause I yeah. mean, and, and I mean, that might show why I don't tend to think of the, a huge black community in Canada. I mean, I don't go exactly. to Canada a lot. Certainly if I'm, I'm going to go to Vancouver probably if I do mm -hmm. right now. Um, but <laughs> like, where would I watch? Like where, I don't even know where I would see this, the stuff besides like, you know, I know yeah. Netflix, I know, like I caught working moms. I know that's a Canadian show that I yeah. really enjoy, Yeah, but I didn't, but if they weren't promoting it at the time, I don't know where I would catch it in the States. Like. Yeah, and that's something that uh, I believe that we're working on a lot more over here when it comes to our Canadian content is just um, letting the world um, know more about us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that will come with um, funding. If we get enough money, you're not going to hear, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to keep hearing about us. But unfortunately, it is a little harder when it comes to that front. Um, and uh, a, a few of our networks, like we have CBC Gem, we have Crave and all those things and Bell TV, but a lot of those are only available within Canada. So even if you're in the States, you can't yeah. typically stream because it's like, oh, you're not available in this region or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, do you want people to watch our stuff or... <laughs> Or not. So I don't know what the technical reason is behind that or why exactly that happens, but hopefully that will be changing soon so that everyone can hear and see the incredible talent that we have going on up here. Do you find if you do see black shows on? Yeah. See, if you see a show, black show like like Insecure. 
um, yes. on HBO. Do you find it? I'm curious as as a Canadian, do you find mm-hmm. that relatable being in 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 LA? Does it I don't know if the the Canadian black experience is different from the mm. United States black yeah. experience. Is that It's actually it's actually pretty similar. Okay. <laughs> um obviously like culturally when it comes to LA culture, there's that I won't really be able to um yeah. identify with. However, when it comes to the idea of what insecure is all in all, when it comes to like dating life and relationships, and even when it comes to like Molly's character and um, growing into the corporate ladder and like all that stuff as a black woman. Yeah, absolutely. We have, we have definitely have relation to that and have some kind of understanding um, when it comes to that. So I thought insecure was a genius show. I've watched it every week and loved every episode. And it was so inspiring to see Issa Rae just starting out in YouTube and she was able to create this huge, you know what I mean? Show and series with a huge network like HBO. Um, And it gave, you know, new actors too, new uh, comedians a chance to show themselves as well and how they broken off and done their own things too and created their own projects. So in in the midst, I would love to do something like that here. Yeah. (laughs) In the midst of black lives matters heights a few years ago, I mm-hmm. would talk to people about like, I would say you want you, you, there's a lot of talk about wanting to support black works and black mm-hmm. art. And there's a show called insecure that's on right now that you're not watching that one of the beauty is that they are just black without it yes. being about being black and about, right. There's no, it's not, there's no trauma porn element to it. It's just them. Right being black and Just living in the lives. world. Yeah. And if you want to see what black people are like, maybe outside of your space when you're not around, this is probably the closest you'll see. Cause they're just, they're just casually, they're casually the black yeah. on it. Right. Um, yeah. And I was ashamed more people haven't seen that despite wanting to su- support black works. Um, as long as it's, you know, not easily available. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, number six. Uh, what, yeah. What's a game you love to play? That's a game I love to play, like video game or just any. Could be any game. Uh, not not everyone's a video game person. A board game or a card um, game. Or... Love Monopoly and I love Jenga. Jenga. Yeah, Jenga get re- listen. Jenga get <laughs> very intense. I'm like, let me step forward for this, okay? Don't knock Jenga because I feel like no. I'm just I, Easter Bunny just brought my daughter's a little Jenga set. There you uh, go. It can get really competitive. Now I'm feeling like, like your hands could, be sweating and that thing is shaking and you're like Jesus Christ, help me. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be the embarrassment. Yeah. Of making this whole thing fall over. I feel like there's a cookout version of Jenga that's different from. Oh, uh, listen, Jenga <laughs> get really intense. <laughs> it can get really really intense so i love, it. I love that i love it <laughs> okay last question uh yeah. number seven in 100 years when someone okay. reads your biography mm. what do you want to be remembered for oh gosh um that i was giving and it doesn't necessarily have to be in money or assets, but um, giving support, giving love, giving encouragement is something I would hope people would remember me by. That's I'm a huge, I'm a huge advocate of hyping people up. I even recorded a meditation called "Let Me Be Your Hype Man." It's available on Spotify. It's literally me talking for like ten minutes, just hyping up how incredible you are. And there's something about me giving that to other people that actually energizes me. And so if there's one thing that people could say after I'm dead and gone, it's that, you know what, this girl really hyped me up and she really made me believe in myself. And yeah, I'm okay with that. (laughs) I love that. That is great. Uh, Chantel Riley, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, oh, thank you. uh your movie Colorblind is now it's it's available everywhere on demand. 
It's available uh-huh. everywhere. So make sure you watch, stream, rent, share with everybody. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. And go on IMDb and give us 10 out of 10 stars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right now. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Black and a half. <laughs>